Okay, so let's start with this thing. I'm going to grind some copper wire and some brass. The dust from grinding is effectively going to be collected right there and if not I may I may have this paper there. I have this belt here, it's pretty rough. Let's see what we got. Yeah, some copper powder with a bunch of crap. Also, I just realized that it's probably much better to use or to grind at this part rather than on the bottom where the motor is. When I do it there, the belt tracks where the load is. And when I do it on the motor side, it's exactly the opposite. Okay, so let's see what we get now. Ah, interesting. Yeah, already it looks much better. Probably there is some some stuff there, but yeah, um, let's say I'm happy. Okay, but let's make few changes to this setup. I don't need this. And I probably don't need even this. Oh shit. That's some pretty good glue. <laughs> Also, I was thinking about using this setup to make some high silicon content steel powder and basically use it as a filler for epoxy. I mean, really high content of the filler and try to make some magnetic cores, let's say. I'm quite sure that such filings will be commercially available, but we can try, like, make some and do some stuff with that. Okay, also now we are dealing with water, so I will use aluminium foil. Okay, so I got about this amount of copper. I don't know, 3 grams. That's very poor performance. I ground it for perhaps 20 minutes. Really terrible. So I guess I will stay with chemical method with the copper. Okay, now let's make some brass. It will be a lot faster, I mean, not like 100 grams in 5 minutes, but it will be quite fast. This is about 3 minutes of grinding, that's about 10 times faster than the copper. Okay, I will use this allen key to try to make a mold. I mean, I will try. But... Well, that's pretty lame. Then I will do a bunch of layers of aluminium foil, so the heat will be insulated. Like that.
this stuff contains flux, so it may kind of explode, so protect yourself. Okay, so here I have my three powders. I'm not interested in copper right now, so we will be trying to make this work with brass and tin. Or solar, actually. I'm going to process this through some screen. This probably not. Yeah, it looks powder enough. Funny thing is that I have magnet there and there probably is some nickel in this brass. I already did some work there and what I did is that I measured few grams of brass. Then I heat it up and basically fill it up with tin solder wire. I did this because if you have surface like this basically you can you can figure out that tin will be, I don't know, one, mi one micrometer thick layer and then calculate the volume of the tin that you used. But if you have thing like this when the surface area is big, you cannot basically, you don't know how much tin you want to have to make a solid piece basically. Okay, so so far I have this mold, which is just the aluminum tube and 20 cent coin, coin pressed into it. It has dry diameter, so I did that. And this washer I will use for preventing sticking powder to the coin. Because it's some brassy shit. We will also need to use some flux. So this is brand new, looks like recycled, but whatever. And what we are going to do is make powder, put it in, into mold, and then I think I think I'm going to saturate it with this flux. Okay, so for the first attempt, I'm going to mix no one part tin and two part brass. Okay, so about 3 grams of powder. Well, as you can see, it looks like the most of the powder is brass. And by volume, sure it is. Okay, so let's transfer that. There's some cat hair. Well, that's not a whole lot. And now I should press it quite a bit. Okay, now the powder is pressed, so it does not move by itself. And let's add a little bit of flux. I was trying to do this with flux dissolved in acetone and then drying it up, but it doesn't seem to work very well. Okay, so flux is now on the surface, and as you can see, it's bubbling quite a lot. I don't know if this is chemical reaction between metal oxides, or if it's just... And once again, there's no flux on the surface. Well, let's call this OK and bake it. Okay, I would say that that was probably a little bit too much of flux, but let's see if can if we can get this out of here. Okay, so this is the other side, and 
there are some some parts that are not very solid there it's okay Now the structure is a little bit porous, which is expected because of all the flux there. Okay, so let's do this once again without flux. Okay, so once again you can see that the powder is quite pressed. I mean, it's nowhere near the commercial applications, but yeah. Also, I guess that the tin is probably melted quite a bit right now. Yes, it is. Okay, so we can now, this thing is absolutely just the powder basically. Yeah, so there is the piece where I tested the temperature with the tin wire. Also, at this point, the tin is completely oxidized. If I if I put this into the mold again and use flux, it will be basically the same thing. Okay, so we still have some material, so what about doing, once again, the same ratio, but using much less flux. Okay, let's fire this. Okay. And look at that. No, it's not completely. Yeah, interesting. Really interesting. Okay, so shall we play more? Let's make one to one powder. And by the way, I'm going to use all the flux I have here, which is about this much. Well, that's quite a lot of flux. Okay, and here's the result. Nice nipple there. Well... It looks porous as fuck, and also... Like this, there's too much tin. At least by... I... Ah! I cannot... Break this down by hand quite good mm. yeah quite nice piece there and let's try this thing and press it let's do our two part bronze to one part tin right now I'm going to press this, and with this much volume, you will see how I will press it. It's done. Okay, last time I used 0 0.8 grams, so let's do it a little bit less this time. What about, I don't know, 0 0.65 or something like that. Yeah, still seems like a little bit too much. Okay, so let's go. Okay, it looks like it's... yep, it is small time. Now let's do a little bit press on it. Mm. That's really nice and solid. I mean... I mean... Yeah. Okay. 
Now this is very nice. I mean there's some... I guess there was probably a little bit too... I guess that there was not... In this place there was not enough of flux. This nipple is also quite unsaturated, which is quite logical. But yeah, it's quite solid. Can we... Ah, nope. It's quite solid. That's great. I mean, so we can probably go even lower. Let's do four to uh, four parts this and one part in. Also, I'm going with 0 0.7 grams of flux. Okay, so let's see what we get there. Here we got this nipple once again, and it seems solid. This metallic reflection is from the from me hammering this thing out of the mold, and well, it's also quite solid, mate. Ah, uh, yeah, this one I am able to break with my hands. So I guess we will not go any lower than this. Have a closer look at this. Be the second one that had one to one ratio. Then this will be the second one, I guess, with 1 to 2 ratio. Also, this is quite a good point to make. All three, all these pieces that I made by 5 grams of powder and whatever amount of flux basically have the five gram basically have five grams okay so now I will use a knife to cut a little chip out of this Interesting, this side was a little bit easier. It's definitely very soft.
Okay. Now this one was only one part thin to four parts brass, so I would expect to see some brass in the cut. I was also thinking about exposing brass surface by writing with that on paper because you can write on paper with tin. So I don't know. Maybe. Um, I think that's rather not. But. Well, this side is wrapped on paper, this side is just just ground and... Yeah, it slides quite better on this side. Oh yeah, I almost cannot see any difference. So this probably isn't as good as a bearing. But other use that is, it can have is that it's quite conductive, as you can imagine. Well, I think that I can use that conductivity of this thing. 